Hello, and a very warm welcome to Design Date. I'm Claire German, Managing Director at Design Centre Chelsea Harbour. In this virtual format, we're keeping our community engaged and inspired wherever they are. We're bringing together designers and industry insiders for some great conversations online. These days, getting a good night's sleep is never more important. And after a long grey winter, we're absolutely longing for some uplifting colour. So I'm beyond thrilled to introduce Dame Zander Rhodes, a pioneer in the British fashion and textile scene, and Alistair Hughes, Managing, Managing Director of Savoir Beds, the company known for creating the ultimate in handmade luxury beds. I have a hunch we're going to be amazed by this creative collaboration and the joyous union of colour, pattern, style and bespoke craft. Colour is one of the most important elements in design. It can transform, revive, soothe or energise. In recognition of this, we've just launched First Look. It's our online platform showing the new palettes for spring summer and well worth a look. For now, I'm handing over to Charlotte Abrahams, who's chairing today's session. And with so much to discuss, there may not be time for questions and answers. So thank you all for tuning in. The future's looking bright and very beautiful too. So thank you. Thanks, Claire. And I am absolutely delighted to be dreaming in colour on this spring-like afternoon with, with Sandra Rhodes and Alistair Hughes. Um, welcome, both of you. This um, collection is a collaboration between two of Britain's most iconic brands. Tell us how it came about. Alistair, why did Savoy Beds want to, want to work with Sandra Rhodes? And Sandra, why did you say yes? <laughs> we, we first met Sandra back in, in 2019 when uh, she was being awarded um, uh, as a legend of luxury by Walpole. And there was a, a big swanky do. Uh, I, I can't remember which hotel it was. Anyway, some lovely hotel. The Dorchester, that's right. And um, we, we, we provided a bed which, uh, which then Zandra went on to dress in the foyer um, so people could launch themselves at it. And the, the bed with dressing looked absolutely amazing. So uh, we were a little bit cheeky and we thought we'll go and have a chat with Zandra and uh, see, see, see what we could do. And, uh, and uh, yeah, she had good thoughts about sleep in our bed. So uh, that, that's where it all began before lockdown, before any of this. Um, but it's been a fantastic collaboration. Absolutely. And Zara, what, what drew you to this, this project? Well, I mean, it was only at this whole do and then this fabulous bed that you realise this is the ultimate bed, the ultimate luxury bed. I mean, you can see behind Alistair the picture because it was invented for the Savoy. And there's this wonderful picture of them carrying away the mattress. And it's, it was just sort of like a, a lovely idea, a dream that came true. I mean, we got together with talks about how about they, you know, I saw some of the stuff they've done where they, they do the incredible bedheads, they've done bedheads that have been part of the National Gallery pictures. I mean, they're real works of art beds. Mm, yeah. So it was a great compliment that they came to me to think of what sort of work of art would I like to create specially for the bed. And the design you chose was Field of Lilies, which is a, one of your most recognisable and, and significant prints. What, why choose that one? It seemed to link with a dreamlike situation, you know, that I think that there's something about flowers and I mean, I love lilies and I've been designing that first in 19, what, 1973 in Japan, when Issei Miyake gave me a bunch of lilies at my show. Oh, right. And so these all, it all stemmed from there. And then we got together with talks and we had came up with different ideas, but the fact- the, co the collaboration was absolutely fantastic. Cause Zandra, as you can imagine, is just a bundle of ideas. Mm. Uh, not, not just color, but ideas. And we had, we had some fabulous Zoom chats, didn't we, Zandra, where you were coming up with all sorts it's of things. It's amazing that we've been able to, you know, we just sort of got together just before lockdown. And then it was a case that we could just get on with the ideas and exchange them over Zoom. And over then Zoom. Send them over. I know. So it's amazing. Been quite amazing <laughs> that we've been able to get this whole thing together in yeah. this time. Absolutely. And just let, tell us a bit about the original Field of Lilies. We've got some really fascinating pictures of some of the original designs because you first designed it as a fashion print yeah I, well I first did drawings when I was given it in Japan and Japan in 1971 was very sort of you couldn't go anywhere you had to sort of because 
it, you know, it, it wasn't sort of, you can go anywhere in these days. So I started drawing this bunch of lilies in the hotel room. And then I came back and created the, the print and the print went on to be some of the, my most notable dresses. And, um, and, and you know, it was just that it was ideal then to think of it like almost like a rainbow above your head. You'll see in a minute how we've done it for the whole thing. But it, so, I mean, I just kept drawing all these lilies. And then in those days I was doing the prints all by myself. Mm. And, uh, and then as you see, we've used it ever since and it keeps recurring, even though it, it's like a, a wonderful design that goes on living and now has become perfect for the bedhead. Absolutely, and it was worn by some real, some major celebrities. I think we've got it. We've got an image of. Um, I've got the of that, haven't we? There's um, Donna Summer Twiggy. and Twiggy. <laughs> on the cover, um, Pat Cleveland with her daughter, and then in um, absolutely fabulous. No, no, not absolutely fabulous. The other one in America. Sex in the City, I think. Oh, Sex in the City. Yeah. Fabulous. She was wearing that when she went to meet Nureyev. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so initially um, um, a fashion print and now um, on a, a bed well, head. It's a totally new version of it because yeah. we've done it like as if it's a rainbow going over your, you know, around your head and they've, it's sort of, and then it sort of springs out. So it's like a double rainbow. Okay. Lots of different colours, either in this amazing close cotton velvet or in a very lovely um, linen weave that's really lovely. And both the textures, just a great, you know, because something like a bed, it's such a, a touchable thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's something that you're going to, you've got to love and you're going to live with. Absolutely. And, and how, how difficult is it to translate a, a print that was designed for, for fashion into a, something that works for a home textile. I mean, presumably that's quite different in the way the repeat works and... Um, oh, well, the point was you've just got to relive yourself into that situation and think, look at the different beds that I've seen them do and think, what would I want the print to do? And then work it out to go round in the curve. Um, you know, we did quite a lot. We did four different themes. This was just the eventual theme that we chose so okay. a lot of thought went into it but it was I'm even sure. more perfect because of the lockdown that you yeah. could concentrate even more because okay. like you were going to be going anyway. <laughs> no, that's true <laughs> we've got some pictures of some of the some of the sketches and Alistair were you did you let Zandra choose whatever print or yeah, well, we, we, uh, Zandra showed us a number and, 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 and we had a good chat about it, but we wanted something that she absolutely loved. But the other amazing thing, actually, and the great thing about having something designed specifically for a headboard um, is that she was able to take into account you know, how people sit in the bed. Because often what we really want, I mean, as Zandra mentioned right at the beginning, um, that we, we, we've done a, a collaboration with the National Gallery and we can use any of their paintings on the headboard. But of course, a lot of paintings naturally have the detail towards the bottom and yeah. something else at the top. Whereas for a headboard, we want the opposite um, because you've got you usually got cushions or pillows at the bottom and you want everything at the top. Um, and so, you know, Zandra was able to come up with something really fantastic, which allowed this magnificent rainbow to occur and a lot of action at the top of the image or the the, the print um, which just works wonderfully well on a, on a headboard so yeah. to work with someone who's able to think in that way and, and, and come up was, was was really marvelous yeah absolutely and the um the craftsmanship um savoir beds is is you know known for its craftsmanship and yeah. every yeah. bed is is made by hand to to order um just uh, so tell us a little bit about that. that well, process. Essentially, we're, we're we're quite different, I suppose, from most uh, m most most manufacturers in this way, in that we make each, each item, whether it's a headboard or a mattress or, or a box spring, is made by one craftsman for one client. We only make to order. Um, and that really suits the kind of thing we're doing with Zandra where, um, you know, we do a digital print, which is a one-off. So each of these, um, the, 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 these headboard prints is made as a one-off. It'll vary depending on the size of your headboard. Um, and yeah, if it had to be a real special, actually, we could even come up with a colorway that Zandra hasn't thought of yet. Um, she, she put some thought into it. So we do some really special stuff. And then it literally is one craft from using the best natural materials, um, putting this, uh, putting this bed together. Together, 
including the headboard. Um, and we find that allows us to use the best materials um, and, 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 and you know, to have the craftsmen who are massively engaged in, in producing something because it's no longer a boring job. You're, 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 you're not doing the same process hour after hour. You're varying the skills you use and so forth all the time. And, mm. and we find it gives a very best result. So here yeah. we've actually got Pat um, working, uh, one of our craftsmen here in London, so we've got about uh, 35 craftsmen and women uh, in London, about a similar number in South Wales. So we employ about 60, 65 uh, craftspeople. Um, and you can see Pat here working uh, on, on the left there with uh, the horse tail. We don't use foam. Uh, we don't like uh, uh, natural materials. We like natural materials that breathe incredibly well. Uh, horse tail is the king of, king of upholstery fillings because it's both a fantastic spring. If you can imagine, it's, it's straight to start with and then it's plaited and gives this amazing curl, this great bounce, which is in your bed and feels fantastic, but also in the headboard. Mm. Um, and um, uh, you can see just in the background there, the fabric draped over, um, waiting to, 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 to go on to the headboard he's preparing um, in, 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 in the foreground. Um, so it's, uh, it's not only a beautiful design, but actually a beautifully uh, constructed piece of work. And mm. you can see Pat there um, pulling uh, that, that fabulous velvet in this case, uh, with that, that, that just stunning green, I have to say, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think green's always my favorite color. That, that's why that color choice got chosen for the main photo shoot. I just, I just love <laughs> it so much. Um, so, uh, um, and how long does it take to, to make a bed? Well, to make, to make a bed is, is, is between 60 and 100 hours. Depends, it can be hundreds, but between 60 and 100 hours. The headboard oh. and making the headboard and covering it's probably about 12 hours. So, you know, it takes someone a couple of days just to do the headboard. And then, of course, the mattress base and all the rest of it, which is, uh, takes up more time. So it's a labor of love. And each, each one, each piece is signed by the craftsman or woman who makes it. So it's just an artist would sign their piece of work and it does that. Um, this one's a little bit special because uh, Zandra's uh, signature is of course also on the uh, on, on the print itself um, so uh, so she signs it off as well which is double sign bed <laughs> exactly exactly wow and Sandra were you able to be were you able to go to will you call it a bed works I think you said rather than a workshop or yeah yeah, yeah. We, 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 I've only we, seen bits and pieces because all of this is being done during lockdown yeah. you couldn't get there through the summer unfortunately not no. what, what we were able to do was a little bit of zoom tour so you can do a little bit of that which uh, we, 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 which helps but uh, yeah, but yeah we still we're still going to drag you around Zandra yes, it exactly. will happen and I have been lucky enough to see the Wigmore Street showroom where you see half of a bed and you actually see all these fantastic springs yeah. and all the padding yeah, so yeah. realize what goes into it, it absolutely really extraordinary yeah yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. all available in our fantastic showroom in chelsea harbour i should point <laughs> yes, out of as course well. absolutely <laughs> um and the colorways it's available in in six colors um well how did you how did you choose the the, the color range we tried to be give quite a lot of variety in that you've got a beautiful gray that goes into things you've got a very soft pink you've got the dramatic green, you've got blues, but um, as Alistair was saying, we could, it's the sort of thing where we could always come up with another colorway if it was someone's room and it particularly had to look a, a certain way. You know, that's what's been so special about this whole job you know, in, in that sense. Absolutely. I think that's one of the wonders, of course, with digital printing is that, yeah, it allows us in the way going back in time, Zandra would have worked with, with screen printing in that way and still does, of course. Um, but with digital printing, we can use some fabrics you might not be able to screen print on so easily, like the velvet, for example, mm. um, but make them still unique and individual. Um, so I think people often think, you know, we make a very traditional product, it's made a very traditional way, but actually, we're about making a bespoke, fantastic product. And that sometimes, often in fact, means using new technology uh, to do things that nobody else is doing. And uh, we, we love the idea of, uh, of digital printing to create really unique pieces. Um, yeah, you know, just the, the idea that someone can can sketch something and you can get it put onto a piece of fabric is, is really quite amazing. And um, that combination of the of the using the latest technology and tr the traditional craftsmanship yeah. is really interesting, isn't it? A absolutely, yeah. and I think that's what you know people want. No one wants. Uh, a piece of old fuddy-duddy stuff they yeah. want the best and uh, so yeah what we're striving to do is use craftsmanship when it gives the best result 
which in many cases it does. But there are other times when, when I say, using whether it's a CNC machine or a digital printer uh, gives a, a wonderful result. And yeah, I mean, it's about using the best that. tools for the job. I mean, exactly. they're all in really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. Um, and the, the colour, I mean, obviously, you know, there's a range, but two of the, I mean, my two favourites are the two really, two really vibrant ones. Zingly which... ones. <laughs> Which, Sandra, is, you know, what you are completely synonymous with, as we can see from your outfit today. Um, just tell us a bit about your life in colour and, and why, it, why it's so important to you. I think colour's very cheery. I find once years ago, I think it was the Daily Mail gave me a challenge to wear black for a week. And <laughs> I found it very difficult. <laughs> I didn't want supposed to wear the same thing every day in black, but I actually think that marks show more on black than they do on something colour. No, that's true. You could disguise a mark much better. Yeah, especially once you add some print in as well. It's very practical. It's true. <laughs> but it's been part of your work from the beginning. With this incredible bedhead, you're just going to think, well, I've just got to go to sleep in it. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm reworking my bedroom just so I can have a savoir bed. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> We've got some pictures of, um, from your archive. There's one of your um, degree show from the Royal College of Art. And we can see there that, you know, the, the Zander Rhodes aesthetic is, is, is there right from the start. Um, do you, was there ever a time when colour wasn't important to you? Um, no, I think it just sort of like, just gradually dawned on me, you know what I mean? It was just somehow it was something I always lent in. I mean, that picture at the bottom, which is my Royal College degree show, and then that's the print that I did for heels that they, they bought from me when I was still at the Royal College. Um, so I suppose it just crept up on me without realising it, like the, the fact that I ended up doing print and loving it and realising just what patterns can do and enliven your life, yeah. like flowers. <laughs> and it took, I mean, it took a bit of time for the, for, for the public to catch up, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, I, yes, I suppose it did. I mean, they didn't, they, I did sell the print to heels, but after that, I didn't sell them. I had to print them myself to prove that they could be all right. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about the picture above. Oh, the picture of our, above is me in California, where I worked with a wonderful close friend, David Humphreys, and we did the whole, we were on, it, my house was on the beach with my partner, Sala Hassanine, and we designed the whole of it in terrazzo. So this wow. is all hand, hand laid terrazzo that I did together with David Humphreys, a friend of mine in Australia. And what about what about the, 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 the pink one? The I mean pink obviously one. pink is your colour. Yes, I worked very closely in in when I first started in the early 70s with Christopher Vane Percy um doing in, interior work. Um and that must have been in his shop in Wayhouse Street in those days, which was just off of um Bond Street. Okay, so I had great fun. What, what, what is it about pink specifically? Because that is the colour we associate with you most, I think. It's a very happy colour. I think pink, pink does make you feel happy. You know, a bowl of pink flowers, yeah. pink chair, you know. I think it, it I, I mean, people say, well, it must be your favourite colour. I mean, I don't maintain I have a fa favourite. I wear whatever's available that I think is right for the time. <laughs> And of course, it's not just it's not just your 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 textiles and your fashion. There's the there's the fashion and textile museum. We've got a picture of that, which is just a, a beacon of brightness in, in Bermondsey. Um, and your apartment above it, which I think is the Rainbow Penthouse. By the I'm, sitting, I'm sitting now in the Rainbow Penthouse as well. The reason it's called the Rainbow Penthouse is because the floor is all the colours of the rainbow, and then everything else is just fits in. Luckily it's big so everything else just just gets put in it and I hope it looks right when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, look, it looks fabulous and this is the, the outside of the Fashion and Textile Museum so your apartment is on the top is that right? In that pink bit that you see on the top with the, the pink cube. With the palm trees, <laughs> like palm trees at the top, which were little plant, plants 
potted plants in 1960. They wow. just have grown to be larger now. <laughs> <laughs> and do you do you do you change the colours or is you know if you're you're in your inside in your apartment? Inside. Well, I'm going to be changing the colour of my bedroom, which at the moment is pink with large roses on it. And I've got to decide how I want it to put in the savoir bed that's going to be the most important thing in there. Okay. And which, which colour are you having? That I don't know yet. I'm, <laughs> I'm clearing the room so I can find out. And I, don't have I think clearing the room could take some time, Zandra. That's my sense. <laughs> oh, it, is, it is taking time. <laughs> And uh, so is this the most colourful collection Savoir Beds has, has done? I, I can't say no, can I? Um, <laughs> no, of course it is. It, it, it is definitely the most, the, yeah, the most colourful. But but what what's really interesting actually is that the the design, of course, works fabulously in, in typical Zandra style, um, which is those the, the, those really beautiful, bright, vibrant colours. But actually, it works incredibly well on a much more subtle level as well. It changes the headboard totally. Um, and uh, so what's what's interesting is when you get the greys and the, and the whites and the blues um it, it, it's a different headboard actually um mm. really really different which, which should... it looks so different in different settings yeah yeah um mm. so it you know it doesn't have to be if that's not right for the uh, for, for the project it doesn't have to be that kind of uh, sort of uh, foghorn of color as it were um it, it, it can be something more subtle it and, and it's subtle. equal equally beautiful um and and what's also interesting i find is even the bright colors actually the whole thing has quite a restful aesthetic which is interesting because you you normally associate these things with uh yeah with with, 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 with being awake i suppose yeah but that actually because it's got a dreamlike thing um uh, i think it, it it's just it's perfect for a, a bedroom. That's it's really well. quite a, a tall order, isn't it? Because obviously yeah. a bed, you know, it has it has it's a functional thing as well as a, a, a centerpiece. You know, yeah. how hard do you have to think about creating something that is impactful but restful? Well, I think I, I think the thing is changing. I mean, I think I think I think people are now more interested in impact. Actually, is is is, is what I sense. I mean, people are now treating the bedrooms as being more important, I think. Um, I, I think there's been a, a, a change probably over the last 10 years or so in terms of bedrooms becoming you know, a much more important part of your house. Because it, Partly because, and it's been obviously during the time at the moment, everyone's perceiving sleep rightly as more important for their health and well-being and so forth. So sleep is incredibly important and people have become more sleep focused, which is one side of things. Um, but also I think um, even in the years leading up to uh, the pandemic, as we've all become busier and more frantic, the bedroom has become much more of a sanctuary um, uh, where people want to feel themselves and cocoon in their own place. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, a, a somber kind of uh, non, not, non-exciting place. I mean, let's face it, all the most exciting things happen in bed. Um, <laughs> So, in fact, everything important in life pretty much happens in bed. Um, so, you know, um, pe people have really been thinking about bedrooms a lot more seriously, I think. So, um, um, you know, I, I, I don't really like to call the bedroom the new kitchen, but, uh, but uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, yeah, maybe in a few years' time we'll be entertaining in our bedrooms as well. Well, we're apparently all working in bed, aren't we? I mean, you know. uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so uh, um, you, you might as well make sure you've got a, a good one, I'd say. Abs absolutely. Have the bright bed head, but you could still, as you'll see, I think you've got another picture of the actual bed when we did a press photograph, and we just used pale peach silk sheets, whereas you could have grey, you know, yeah, you, you yeah. Have to have yeah, yeah, that bit bright, so you'd be, you know, that there, there'd be peace that you'd against, your yeah, body. no, that, that's absolutely I, this yeah. picture. I mean, is it's so fabulous, and for something that was conceived before the pandemic um, and then created during it you've come up with a collection and particularly this in this colorway that is so completely what we need at this moment <laughs> you know it's an extraordinary um, bit of serendipity really would, would you would you say you see the sheets of pe the peach sheets and you could put that into a much more somber surroundings and it isn't over bright when you think about it you know no. and there's something very very restful it's to do with the the rhythm of the of the pattern or something 
Um, it's the way it curves around on mm, that piece. It's so mm, lovely, you know. Mm. Yeah. Did, you, did you know that straight away when you were asked to, to, to create a collection? Did you immediately know it would be the, the lilies? No, no, we tried four different themes and then we all discussed it together over Zoom. <laughs> of course. <laughs> No, we, uh, we 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 had we had we had a, a a number of things, but we just we just and from our side we just thought there's something so lovely and organic about the uh, the lilies, um, and 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 I say that that rainbow um, kind of effect, which which I say does does give actually an incredibly restful and kind of cocooning um, uh, sort of impact, um, which which is is really incredible. And uh, yeah, we, we have to say we we, we were we. we well, there, were, there were a couple of choices, weren't there, Zandra, that were at the top there? But, uh, but, but, but yeah, in the end, we've come for this one. this one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it is, it is a triumph. It's, 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 you know, it's so beautiful and kind of joyous. Yeah. And, and it, it's a bed which we all, you know, need to, we need to sleep well at the moment. <laughs> and have, have other fun as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you going to do another one? Are you going to do another collaboration? Well, I think I mean, we're, we're all, excited all, with always this. Always more from time, sure. It's the most it's, it's the most fun collaboration we've had, I think, in terms of uh, actually going through the process. So, uh, and uh, we, we, I also know the um, uh, we we were actually very very lucky because there was a break in the lockdown for us to do the photography and so forth. And uh, so, uh, and unfortunately, we, we still limited numbers, of course, going to Zandra's marvellous penthouse. So I, I didn't get to go. But um, the delivery guys, I have to say, were bowled over Zandra. So uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you did to them, but they want another collaboration. Um, <laughs> So they they loved it, absolutely loved it, and no, of course, of course, we'd love to. And I think there's the, the, there's lots more potential to explore. Um, and I say it's it's absolutely the most fun I've ever had on Zoom uh, working on Zoom. <laughs> well, it, it shows in the in the in the end result, I must say. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so that photograph we're going to be looking at is that is that in the showroom or they're at your apartment? Uh, it's in in my apartment. The is it? Okay. Bit. That yes, the men came and they erected the whole thing, so we had a chance to see how beautifully it went together. That was done <laughs> the day before we did the photographs. Wow, yeah. I'm surprised you let them take it away again. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been it's been really lovely to talk to you this afternoon, and a kind of injection of, of joy and, and colour and pattern and, and fun, which we, which we are. Just desperate for. <laughs> I, I'm actually not in black at all, but I'm just outshone by Zandra, so it just appears you have that pink way. Pink trousers on. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. It's been fascinating to talk to you, and I can't wait to go and see the beds in in the showroom. Okay. Oh, Thanks so much, Charlotte. Thanks Thank so you much. so much, Zandra. You've been fantastic. That's half an hour gone already. It flies by. <laughs> 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 we'll meet again and talk about the next collaboration. Wonderful. That's Thank fun. you. Wait to Thanks. Come and see it in Chelsea Harbour, which is so stunning when you get there. It's a beautiful showroom. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.